Wake that up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Is that there has been this rise of religion that makes people think that you got to be a certain way Mm -hmm. to look like what a person that loves God to be. And my job is to debunk all of that. Mm. Like Kanye West is doing right now with his Sunday service. And I love him. Let that man heal. Mm -hmm. Let that music heal that man. Greetings. (laughs) (laughs) We are in season two of the exposition and this wonderful set, I know y'all see, we've, we have some upgrades happening here. The Lord has blessed us and our uh, production team and construction team, they've done a great job. I mean, this just looks straight legit. So I definitely appreciate uh, all the hard work that has gone into this. And uh, we're just gonna start right off talking about uh, some of the issues that we're facing this, this particular show. If you missed any of the first season, it's all available <clears throat> on our YouTube channel at uh, EX Ministries. So you can check those episodes out. I think we got seven or eight ep- episodes, I think. Um, but this is our first episode for season two. And uh, I'm here with Carmina Barnett, radio personality. Also here with recording artist, the one and only Jay Bryant. Amen. Rapper, minister, preacher, husband, hard worker, all of that. And then uh, I'm G. Craig Lewis, EX Ministries and pastor of the Adamant Believers Council Church in North Richland Hills, Texas, which is where we are right now filming this uh, episode. And today we're going to be talking about the straightforward gospel, no compromised gospel, just I mean, because uh, as y'all are about to see, um, sometimes the gospel kind of gets lost when people get on various platforms. So, and Pastor G, let me ask you this question. In the clip we just saw, we saw them, of course, interviewing there. And would you say that that is even a good platform for Christians to use when they're trying to win souls for Christ? Well, I'm not Pastor G, but if I may. It's, um, it's been a while. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the, the question would be, you know, should Christians even use this platform for entertainment anyway? Um, you know, that's the real question. If we take a look at first Corinthians six twelve, it states all things are lawful uh, unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So when we when we look at opportunity versus God leading us, I think that's the biggest thing or, or the, the misstep in a situation. We figure just because of the outlet or the platform, if it's grandiose, so to speak, then it must be God. Right. We always negate the fact that in scripture, Satan indeed offered Jesus what? Right? The Platform. kingdoms of this world. Platforms as if Jesus didn't already run the world. But the point is, um, that's the, or that's the question. Should we even be on those platforms at all or use those as enter- uh, entertainment sources? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and in this particular case, uh, my question that I want to know is, how do you even get inter- interviewed by a false guy? <laughs> so if you are a servant of the true and living God, how do you sit on the stage with Charlemagne, the God? Right. I mean, that's that's I mean, God has never equated himself. He said that those, you know, uh, he's most high. Yeah. So he don't sit at the table. This ain't Mount Olympus. Right. With Zeus and Apollo and, and all of them. I mean, he's not sitting at the table with the gods right. discussing things. Exactly. He is God. So. Uh, if I serve him, then I'm not allowing a false God to interview me. Um, and then how does a man that considers himself a God, meaning Charlemagne, um, and considers the Bible uh, hypocritical, how does he even interview a born again believer from the position of authority? Okay, right. And that's the biggest thing. If we're doing an interview, we have to establish an authority. Okay. And that's the, you know, that's in any avenue of life, but especially when it comes to the word of God. If the authority isn't established, the conversation is moot, which basically means that it's uh, left debatable. debatable. So yeah. the question is still there when it's done. Right. And the scripture speaks out against this. And it also tells us how can two walk together unless they be in agreement. So if if we're both just just, you know, just going back and forth, but no authority is established because, you know, it's, it's hard for unbelievers to establish God as an authority. If you don't believe he is who he says he is. Exactly. The Bible says he says uh, if you want to come to me, you must first believe I am mm-hmm. who I say I am. 
That's establishing authority. That's so if you're going to talk about me, you better establish who I am. Right. Boy, I'll preach up in here in this first episode. <laughs> but you really do, though. You have to establish that because that's why I don't sit up and argue with people because I'm like, what well, do you believe in? Well, right. no, I don't believe in the Bible. That's the white man's book. Well, then, brother, we, ain't, we don't have a discussion. Right. I have to establish an authority. We have to do that in our house. I mean, mm. the, a kid, the, the, the smallest kid can't whip the big kid. Right. The, that's the parent's job. He's the authority. Or she's the authority. So we, the authority has to be established before we start discussing anything or the whole conversation was a big waste of time because all we did was debate things and we got and it got us nowhere. Hmm. OK, gentlemen. Well, then my next question is, how should a Christian address the subject of Christ when he is in the midst of people that believe another way? Uh, should he just, you know, fit in and try to relate to them? What should happen so, in that case? So, so let me let me pose this question. So okay. let, let's say this. Why would we go on a show where the people controlling the narrative don't believe what we believe or even want what we have to offer anyway? So in, in this in this particular interview, <laughs> right, one of the hosts, uh, she goes by the name of Angela, right? Okay. She she states, oh, yeah, yeah, I was listening to your music. And then Kirk responds by saying, oh, oh so you listen to my music? And she said, well, I, I, I got to listen to it to interview. You. <laughs> so so. Not only do we not believe in the same God or, or, or even try to adopt the same lifestyle, what I do for a living and what she does for a living, that's the only reason why she would pay attention to me or the host would, or anybody would pay attention to me in the first place. Right. So I think that that's, that's something that you have to take a look at. This mm -hmm. was all about record sales. Mm -hmm. Clearly all about record sales. Kirk purposely, he used his own story for the sympathy pool, for the emotional drag. So one question will be posed and then somehow it got converted to his personal life story that happened 30 something years ago. Mm -hmm. Now we all have a story, we all come from a place where we've had to make it through some trials and some tribulations. You wouldn't be a human being mm -hmm. if that wasn't the case. So the, it's not about bashing where you come from, it's about at this point in your life, shouldn't you be the leader? Mm -hmm. Leading somebody right? somewhere. Because you, you've made it through versus being the person that always has to be, re that always have to be relatable based on a, a, a disservice or a circumstance or a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we have a responsibility. The Bible says we are to give an answer wherever, whenever we are approached. Uh, and when we're approached with uh, questions concerning our faith, we have to give an answer. The answer mm -hmm. must be direct and based on scripture. It has mm -hmm. to be straightforward. We must be straightforward when we're asked about our faith and sin. Mm -hmm. So, I can't go play ring around the roses with your question. Right. If you are asking me a question that could lead to your eternal damnation, mm -hmm. if I don't answer it correctly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing is I can't go on the show and forget that you, Charlemagne, the God, the God worship a false God and don't believe in Christ. Angela, you don't believe in Christ or you don't serve him. So I can't go on the show and show and skip over you guys right. to try to get the audience. Mm -hmm. That's not fair to you guys. Right. When the cameras aren't rolling, we need to have a discussion. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, are we prioritizing souls? Right. Are we taking one for the team or somebody's got to take one for the team right. in order it's, for it's, it's a gamble. <laughs> it, so so I, I get on I get on their platform. I, I say that my purpose or my sole purpose is to spread the gospel, right? To shine the light of Christ. But I'm on their platform that is a, I'm in opposition of the light of Christ. Hmm. So how does that mix? The Bible specifically said yeah, that we yeah. can't mix the, the dark or the, or the holy with the profane. We can't do that because there's always going to be a conflict. So whoever the listening ear is walks away even more confused than, than, than before. So if I hear of a Kirk Franklin, he's associated with Christianity. I'm aware of what the Breakfast Club is and they're associated with the world or, or the spirit of, of, of the devil. And I'm getting both perspectives. Somebody has to compromise. Mm -hmm. So if it's the devil's platform, who's going to compromise? The person that's supposed to have the light if it's the devil's platform. Mm -hmm. Well, you know which one compromised when the show goes off and comes back on the next day. <laughs> right. And, and it's, just, it's, it's worse than what it was or, or, exactly. or nothing changes. Yeah, the next day they bring in Crunchy Black to the show. <laughs> right behind you. He might be right. waiting in the hallway. Right, right. Birdman might be waiting mm -hmm. in the hallway. Absolutely. And this particular show comes on with a cuss word. Right. Wake your A up. That's what it says. That's that's the in, the in the intro to the show. And Pastor, what's behind Kirk as he's preaching the gospel? A pride flag. A pride flag. The whole right? time. <laughs> the, I think the it touched him. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the scripture, well, let me go to let me do the scripture. <laughs> First Peter three and fifteen says, "But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, mm -hmm. and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with Amen. meekness." So he says, "Give an answer to every man that asks you." So if you are asked or questioned about Christ, but mm -hmm. you don't give an answer that Christ would give. Mm -hmm. That's irresponsible. Amen. That means that you are taking your ministry and who you are uh, uh, for granted to sell albums, boost your platform, get likes or comments, whatever you're trying to do. Right. But you're not preaching the straightforward gospel in lieu of that. Right. And that's irresponsible. Well, let me ask this question because this was posed on the show and this is from Charlemagne. He asked a question. He said, even as I get older and I study the Bible, I read things like being gay is an abomination. Your father is the devil. And so he went on to say you have homophobic stuff in the Bible and anti-Semitic stuff in the Bible. So it's like this ain't love. This don't sound like it's God. <laughs> so having said that, how would you guys answer him having heard him say that? Okay, so like, like, let, let, let's feel like you was on the show okay, okay. instead. And, and how would you answer? Uh, I, would I, answer? I, I would say, hey, man, first of all, why do you read the Bible if you don't believe in it? <laughs> so, of course, you're going to question something you don't believe. So that, that's a misstep there. Then I would say, well, you, you're a God, right? <laughs> So why don't you just relate to your own words or, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's why, your body? Why are you looking for so much guidance as a God? <laughs> what are the perks of being a God if you need somebody else's God or guidance in the, in the process? It don't make sense. The, the, the Bible is not a novel. It's not a piece of literature that we pick up for, for entertainment, so to speak, right? Secondly, again, like, as I was saying, you should have your own word to study, Charlemagne the God, right? So, the, the Bible is not for the unbeliever. I think that's what a lot of people get um, uh, their misunderstanding. We, we can't give a Bible to a person who hasn't believed or mm -hmm. right. You, the, you just can't do that. So, so if we go to scripture, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. OK, that the man of God the, the may who, who, the man. Who, so who's the Bible for? For the man. That's, that, that's for the man of God. Not not. Charlemagne the God. Right. No, the definitely man of definitely not Charlemagne. Capital G. Right. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the Bible that you question, you don't live by it anyway. So you are never going to agree with what's inside of it. You already have this concept that the way you go, the way that you're going about life is the right way. And, and, and until you can submit yourself to that authority, which is God, which is God's word, it's going to always bump your head. Always. Yeah, and if I was on the show, I mean, okay, so you you you, you say that the Bible's got homophobic stuff in it. Right. Homophobic means fear of humans. <laughs> God created humans, so he so he's scared definitely of, he's not scared of, scared us, scared right? of humans, right. Right? right? Then Jesus was king of the Jews. How can the king of the Jews be anti-Semitic <laughs> toward the Jews? Right. Like, however he deems the Jews is what the Jews are, right. if you're the king, king of, them. <laughs> of the Jews. So you're trying to decode the Bible with societal monikers, but the only way to decode God's word is through his Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. And the Bible tells us, John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the only way to decode spirit is through the spirit. Amen. Well, we got to take a real quick break, but we're going to be back and talk more about the straightforward gospel. Do not forget, go to the website, go to exministries.com. That's exministries.com. Era Man 3, the Emasculation Proclamation. To emasculate means to deprive a man of his male role or identity. The toxic masculinity that society is fearful of is a result of single mothers raising emasculated boys that have no idea how to be men. Our society right now, everybody's identifying as something and wanting to be whatever they feel. That's because they're pulling masculinity out 
because they know attached to masculinity is logic because it takes fortitude to stand up against emotions. Yeah. But years ago, pre-1944, the procedure of vasectomy was a no-no. It was frowned upon because of the effect it had on the gender roles in the home. Somebody's wife is looking outside the home for fulfillment. She's looking for her fulfillment somewhere else because she's under bad leadership. Their intent for relationships are altered from God's purposes. They use their beauty and images online to lure men in and then cast spells on them that render them helpless, hopeless, and weak-minded. Can't think about nothing else. I go to work. I can't think about nothing else. I can't just think about this woman. I can't think about nothing else, man. She said something. You have a spell on you, brother. You have a spell. I know that I study the Bible, and you, you know, you can read things about, you know, uh, being gay is an abomination. Or you can read them when he said, I think he said, Jesus told him that your devil is the father when he was talking mm -hmm. to Jewish people. So people thought that was anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. have homophobic yeah. stuff in the Bible. You have mm -hmm. anti-Semitic stuff in the Bible, and it's like this ain't love. So we're back. We're talking about more of the straightforward gospel. And the last question we talked about, if you guys could go back for a moment, because I shared with you what the host Charlemagne said, and. You guys answered it here, but what do you think those that were viewing the show, what did they walk away with after that question was asked and the answer that was received? <laughs> they, um, they got like a fast course in seminary class. <laughs> and, you know, what, what I think what, not I think, what Kirk attempted to do was, I think, sound too professional as a Christian, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Because he can't jeopardize the record sales. So what he did was he went down an avenue that would make him sound astute and he started talking about exegeting Chris, uh, scripture, uh, eisegete uh, scripture and canonized scripture and text. You know, the church jargon that if you're familiar with that world, it would kind of like, you know, tinkle, tickle your ear a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, essentially he said nothing right. that would help a person that is either trying to find a way or trying to gain better understanding. I and mean, I think that's part of the problem because what I've heard uh, be defended in the past is people always say pastor and, and I'm saying this to you because you, you have experience in this area you know you, you don't you don't know what it feels like to be in front of the camera or under the spot like somebody asks you a question you got to be quick on your toes and stuff like that my thing is don't you just give them the truth to the answer All right like why does it have to be anything other than what you're supposed to state so he never when, when Charlemagne started talking about uh, or accusing the Bible of being homophobic or accusing Jesus of being anti-Semitic. Uh, like he never, he never, Kurt never defended the Bible. Right. He never stated what the Bible says about right. um, the, the Jews and what that scripture means when Jesus was talking about being, uh, you are of your father the devil because they were liars, meaning they were operating in that spirit. They were mm -hmm. out being influenced by a lying spirit, which was of the devil or is the devil. He's the father of lies. Or the whole idea of uh, being homophobic. How would you deal with that? So I, I want to ask you the questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what is this thing about the Bible? It just doesn't seem like we. It's it's about it. It tells of a loving God, yeah. Because it seems like it separates people based on what they want to live like or what they want to do. It's, it's it feels homophobic. Well, I, I, what does the Quran say? <laughs> Aha. Yeah, I mean, can we talk about the Quran? Sure. What about Buddhist? What about Buddhist writings? Mm -hmm. What about the New Age theology? Why, why are we talking about the Bible? Oh. What is your problem with the Bible? So, are you saying that no religion <laughs> accepts hom homosexuality? What, or what? What are you? No, I'm just bringing up other religions because why are you picking on Christianity? Hmm. Why? Why are you singling that one out? Why? Why can't we talk about the broad spectrum? Of all of them, if, if, I mean, why do you have a problem with the Bible? And that will tell you everything. Gotcha. The, the, the issue is not what is written. The issue is, I don't believe it. And that's the thing. I don't believe in that. So let's take shots at it. Let's bring a guy on that's not equipped to answer questions because, and I'm not saying Kurt is not studied or a student in the word or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's just not equipped on that platform to answer because he needs that platform right. for something else. It'll, it'll cost and everything. so if, if I need the platform to sell my album right. and my album is love, life and living or whatever it is, right. he kept saying, let's all sit at the table. Even though you may believe this, you may believe that we ought to all be able to have a conversation mm -hmm. and sit at the table because of love. 
right. because love is, you know, something that we all have in common. Well, my Bible says that God is love. Mm -hmm. Not Charlemagne the God, but the God of the Bible is love. So if God is love, then don't we have to have, doesn't he have to be the common denominator here if we're going to sit and talk about love, if that's my belief? Mm -hmm. If not, then we're going to disagree. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. He never came out and disagreed with him, mm -hmm. and he never came out and made his stance. And this right. is just not a knock on him. This is a, I've seen a bunch of videos yeah. of folks that have, I saw somebody on DL Hughley's show do this. I've seen people on all these platforms trying to use the platform for their fame, but at the same time, they are taken, you know, they are, are taken down for the platform. Right. And I'm not showing you the truth about homophobia. It, th let's don't talk about homophobia. Let's talk about homosexuality being a sin, mm -hmm. not just the sin uh, uh, like pride and arrogance and those kind of right. things. But a, the Bible Envy says this is a that, sin yeah. against your body, right. meaning that your body will be broken down if you continue in this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Anti-Semitic, what are we talking about here? We're all new Jews. Mm -hmm. So according to the scripture, we're new Jews. So that's what I'm saying. Let, uh, let, let's talk to these people and answer their questions mm -hmm. instead of running all the way around and giving them all <laughs> kinds of things so that I can stay on this stage because if I say the wrong thing, right. y'all gonna dismiss me. And, and, and my thing is, he went the route of, say, of stating, you know, men and women are not being properly trained. Um, I bas basically, he was explaining what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. So not being properly trained, does it does, you don't have to be trained to give an answer to a, a direct question. Yeah. So is the Bible homophobic? No. Right? Is, is Jesus anti-Semitic? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then what? So then from there, we're able to expound. If you want to, if you want to, you know, take the time on the radio show or on the platform to talk about that, then let's talk about that. But understand that we'll never get to the music because that's the problem. Then we'll never get to the music. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll never get to how many albums I sold. We'll never get to my past and why I'm still hurt. It, it went all the way to talking about how he was still unloving and unforgiving for his own parents. Mm -hmm. How are we leading, right, a generation or a nation of people from a place of, of hurt or from a place of unforgiveness? Mm -hmm. If I can't talk to you about forgiving whatever's happened to me in my past, if I'm not in a place of forgiveness, I should not be on anybody's camera or anybody's microphone. Yeah. Right? And that's just not, again, as you stated, it's not just Kurt. Multiple people get in these positions and put us in these binds where it looks like we're divided as a church when really the Bible is always right. The Bible is always true. In our own uh, agendas, we decide to, you know, to sidestep it for whatever our goal or motive is. And, and, and if you just rest on the Bible, you always have an answer. Exactly. And that's the thing. I always have an answer. So, you know, I don't prepare when I get ready to do interviews and different things. And you know that because you interview me the most. I mean, I, I never have notes or anything. I always tell you, no, just ask me because I'm confident that the word is going to speak through me. And because I know it, I study it and I understand it. I mm -hmm. depend on it. I can always give an answer because the word has all the answers. Amen. Well, there was another question that was addressed and I want you guys to speak on it as well. This question was asked, how do they use scriptures like thou shalt not kill to ban abortions? But say, for instance, in the state of Alabama, the next day there'll be an execution. Mm -hmm. So how is that scripture used? Is that the Bible contradicting itself? That question was asked. OK, so this is how you respond. First of all, the Bible states thou shalt not commit murder. Right. Right. So there's a there's a significant difference there. Anyone that knows God knows that many were killed for God's sake and people and God used his own people in the Old Testament for these things. Right. So killing and committing murder is not the same thing. But abortion is murder. And that's what they keep sidestepping. So if you look at Proverbs 6 and 17, it says a proud look. That's defined specifically. A lying tongue. That's things defined. That God hates. These, are, these are the things that God hates. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it says a hand that, that sheds innocent blood. Mm -hmm. And abortion is shedding innocent blood. That means the recipient of the death penalty of that action didn't do anything to warrant it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So if. If we're going to have that conversation, let's have it from the truth, because he kept on saying love is truth and truth is love. Well, because I love you, I'm telling you, don't commit murder. Thou shall not commit murder. Yeah. And then he used his own, the fact that he took a girl to get an abortion. And mm -hmm. that's the part I didn't like, because yeah, yeah. if they're asking you about abortion and then you say, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life, but 
I took a girl to the abortion clinic and, 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 and ha she had an abortion. Mm -hmm. Then the lady was like, well, did you force her? He's like, well, you know, when a man does it, it's kind of like I took, you know, the position. I drove her there. So I mean, <laughs> how do you mention that you pro-life mm -hmm. and then tell this same secular carnal audience that you took a girl to have an abortion? Mm -hmm. Now, if you are, if these people are a fan of yours, mm -hmm. And you are their uh, influence. Mm -hmm. Why would you take that platform to show you're both? Right. I'm pro-life. Right. And I'm pro-abortion. Right. And so then he said, you know, but I, I called a girl and I apologized to her and all mm -hmm. of this and that. But you never stated that it was wrong. Right. And you never said what pro you never define pro-life mm -hmm. you defined your album mm -hmm. you defined the lyrics mm -hmm. you broke down the love language of your oh, album yeah. but you didn't break down what is wrong with abortion right. and why you shouldn't have done that charlemagne even brags and was like hey i had three of i them. had three of them i yeah. mean I, I had three of them because right. you know in the black community i mean it's just like you know that's like going and getting a flu shot right right, right. It's and, <laughs> and, and so Somebody has to stand up in these situations and say, you know, brother, you know, even if you're going to use your teenage or however old he was, he, I think he was older than that. But even if you're going to use that and tell that, you need to say, I made a mistake because that was sin. Right. And as a Christian, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I'm teaching my kids something different. And Charlemagne, I just want I want my audience or the audience that's listening to know that it was wrong. Mm hmm. But when you got to sell the records, you, you know, you can't say that. Right. So, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, I'm just saying, even to, to communicate that there's no sin, no, no sin that's uncommon to man. We, we know as human beings, we share flaws. Mm -hmm. We know as human beings, we were born into sin. We know that we have a need for the sacrificial blood of Jesus. We know that we need redemption. Right. We, we know these things already as as believers. And if you I have. I would assume, but still equipped and, and prepared and ready to, to answer you, but I would assume that you know that that's my message. You know that I don't place myself above you just because I'm going to have this particular conversation against sin. Mm -hmm. You should, I shouldn't have to always pit myself against qualified. my own, right, and qualified against my own belief system every single time. He just kept, he just kept saying, I'm embarrassed, you know, because of how, how everything is being mishandled and how we do, you know, and, and you know, even my boys on the block, you know, they don't want to hear this because it's so many inconsistencies, but you're being the inconsistent. The yeah. inconsistency in, in the, in the situation by not answering the questions based on the situation or, or, or what's going on on the show because they kept hurling stuff at them and I get it. I would just, just slow it down, man. Hey, man, you just asked me five questions. I would love to answer all. Mm -hmm. but let's focus on two of them for the sake of time. However, control, don't let them build a narrative based on all of society's norms or whatever agenda they're pushing as a media conglomerate. Mm -hmm. iHeartRadio, yeah. right? Don't let them conform, uh, control that narrative. Don't conform to what they want. Answer it and be straightforward. They'll know not to play with you the next time, or you might not get invited. No, you ain't coming. Back. However, <laughs> if you want to sell records, you can't stand on on the word of God anyway. So it's it's just you know I, people have to make a decision, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I went back and forth with Charlemagne on uh, Twitter mm -hmm. because he 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 came at me because of the video that I did. Um, uh, what was the video? A video about this whole thing, the Breakfast Club thing, oh, yeah. uh, losing my religion, losing my religion. Yeah, yeah so he I was did the video. On, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. well, I talked to, I talked about the whole thing, and of course, they had my video pulled off YouTube. Right, right. right. Uh, and so he got on Twitter saying, "Hey, you know, why wouldn't G. Craig come to the show? Why won't he talk or whatever?" Mm -hmm. And I said that exact same thing. I said, "You know, if I'm not in control of the narrative, then it's it's pointless. It's mm -hmm. it's just a moot point. I mean, right. we we won't get anything accomplished." You know, with a pride flag hanging behind me and you being a God. Right. And I, I specifically said that a God mm -hmm. can't interview me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I said. But when they interviewed Louis Farrakhan, he had him remove everything and put a picture of Elijah Muhammad back. No, he did. Yes, he did. He they cleared the entire see, mantle see, and put a picture of Elijah Muhammammad. See, he's trying to get likes Muhammad. on this video. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. You don't have to do that. Well, I, I'm just, that's, that hear that's, what, that's what happened. When they, when they interviewed Louis Farrakhan, they moved all of the alcoholic beverages, all of Charlemagne's books, the the pride the, the pride, pride flag, all everything, and just had a picture of, of Elijah Muhammad sitting behind Louis Farrakhan. Wow. Which camera's on me so I can look at it? <laughs> they sure did. They sure did. They sure did.
But we're the intolerant people, though, as, as believers. We're intolerant. We're not the ones that are loving. We're not the ones that are accepting. We, we're just making the difference between what's going to ultimately lead you to, to death and eternal death versus something that you can you have control to accept is wrong now and take the steps towards making the change. But if you don't want to take the steps towards making the change, then we don't have anything to talk about. Yeah. And, 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 and additionally, we certainly can't discuss music because you don't listen to my music anyway. <laughs> and then if you're on there and not taking responsibility as a minister or a child of God or whatever, mm -hmm. then you're being irresponsible. And therefore, the Bible says you are casting a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing by mentioning that you had did the abortion thing or whatever, but not bringing clarity on why it was more important for you to tell the people that you did it mm -hmm. than to tell the people why you shouldn't have done right. it. Right. Wow. And that means that you just became a stumbling block. The scripture says it like this, Romans 14 and 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block Amen. or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Mm -hmm. So if you mention that without clarity, you put a stumbling block in front of thousands of young wow. people that will take your words and say, well, Kurt Franklin did it. I'm going to do it because you never told them why it was wrong to do. Wow. You both mentioned a word narrative, and I want to talk about that for a moment. And looking at it, what is up with the whole racism and the narrative <laughs> of the black versus white? You know, how should one respond to those kind of comments? Yeah, they had a bunch of that. In right, right. So as we were talking about earlier, Char Charlemagne controlled the whole narrative. He is considered the a mic, um, And you understand that coming mm -hmm. from. Um, the radio world, he's the a mic. So he, in, in most of their interviews, he controls the narrative because he's the one that's willing to go to the, the furthest to, to maintain a viewership. So he controlled the narrative the whole time. Um, but what he did was he started describing an old white man being racist as Kirk made a separation of our Christian brothers. So what, let me set it up. So what he did was he asked Kirk Franklin, he said, so what was the motivation or the inspiration behind the title, Love, Live, Laugh at it? What's the name of it? Laughing and Living Love. Something What's like that, name? right? So you the radio narrative, person. narrative. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> he immediately gave, he, he immediately gave the credit to the Breakfast Club. Man, he said, man, what y'all do up here every day, man, you know, and, and, and concerning what's going on in society and our culture and, and you know. Uh, he said he listens every day. Yeah, he does, right? Clearly, because, you know, you know, uh, you know our brothers across the aisle. So he, he made a difference between African-American men or Christians and, and Caucasian Christians or white Christians. And the Bible doesn't make a difference between us at all, in, in, in fact, right? Mm -hmm. In Christ, we are all one. Yeah. So... We, we should pray and esteem other races higher than ourselves according to the word of God, not according to the religion of Kirk Franklin. We, we don't. Or the color of skin. All right. Or the color of skin. This idea that we have to separate ourselves because the world is pushing that agenda is ridiculous. Right. Thank God I'm a part of a, a, a church, uh, a Adamant Believers Council. We're multicultural. Right. Nobody has ever said, what's up, my white brother? <laughs> oh, what's up, my black, my African brother, my, 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 my Nubian, uh, P31, right? right? We, right. We, we, what's up, Kevin? Uh, so, <laughs> we, we don't do that. We don't make a difference that the Bible doesn't even make a difference in right. between. And I think that that's the cause, um, the, the spirit behind that would have to be, uh, Lucifer or the devil himself, because that's what he did in heaven. Mm -hmm. He caused a division. And you cause a division, it's easier for him to work, manipulate, and mastermind whatever it is, which is the death of all of us, because obviously he wants his place back. Yeah, yeah. And we as the church are supposed to be a called out people. So if we're called out from the world, mm -hmm. then color and race doesn't even come into picture because we're all called out to be one. So if we're all called out to be one, then I can't be, uh, once again, I use the word irresponsible and mm -hmm. say my brother's across the, the aisle, right. meaning I'm separating myself from the the white man or whatever. Right. And it's just this whole racial war, and I talked about it, I think, last season, but this racial war is being sparked out of ignorance because right now, I mean, come on now, things are good for African Americans right now. Talk now, about we it. have isolated incidents, which white people have those two Native Americans have those too. Everyone has isolated incidents where somebody took, you know, a cop took his uh, authority too far or somebody decided to do this or mm -hmm. that. Sometimes mental illness causes whatever. We have isolated incidents. But as a whole, 
we're more prosperous now as African Americans than we've ever been in the history of America. Talk about it. Right now, Donald Trump, the one that all black people want to hate for some reason. I still don't know why they just hate him. But well, they hate him because he's not Obama. But that Donald Trump has raised the revenue for African American businesses higher than any other president in United States history. Mm -hmm. Right now, even the rich basketball players uh, have a problem saying they have a problem with racism. Do you know? Now, ain't nobody going to believe this. I heard this today. And I went and looked it up. They want to stop calling the owners of the team owners because that sounds like they're slave masters and there's too many African Americans on the team. So they're offended because they call the owners going on. owners. That's it, y'all. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That's some fool. Yeah, makes no sense. Owner. Man, if I own a company, you better call me <laughs> right, an owner. You're right. If you own it. And I, you don't own, own the players. You right. own the contracts. You own the stadiums. You, you don't own men. Right. They could quit at any time. They could say, hey, man, I don't want to play for your team. No, I don't want your millions. <laughs> at any time. This is what <laughs> the slaves prayed for. Those that were under slavery, mm -hmm. under that, they prayed under duress. They prayed for this kind of freedom we have right now. Mm -hmm. They prayed for these opportunities and we still looking for racism. Mm -hmm. We're looking for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about it actually happening because most of the folks I'm talking about have never experienced it. Mm -hmm. Folks sitting up mad at, at uh, what happened in the sixties and they 30 years old. Yep. Brother, yep. the, that you, you, you felt your mama shaking when you was in the womb. I mean, what happened? Right. You wasn't here. Right. So what I'm saying is we don't, of course, we don't uh, look the other way and act like it's not happening. Mm -hmm. But black racism is just as bad as white racism. Talk about it. Racism is racism. Talk about it. So yep. that's what I'm saying. If you're going to deal with the white racism, let's deal with these Hebrew Israelites walking around looking like Mortal Kombat on the street corner. Yeah. Calling out white people and saying that they're cursed. Yeah. What, what do you want you to do something about that? Talk about it. No, but you need their sign so you can march when somebody gets shot. And that's what I'm saying. It's all too inconsistent, mm -hmm. but it's all emotional. And, and it's all, you know, I talked about it last season. It all comes from fatherlessness because when, 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 when men are raised by women, they become sensitive to these things. They become emotional. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to get them on board with social agendas because right. they're more feeling uh, than a man really, really should be. Philippians said, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Mm -hmm. Strife is the most important word in this particular passage as it pertains to what we're saying, because that's strife. If I make a difference between my color and your color, but both call us both Christians, I'm creating strife there. Mm -hmm. Right. Where, yeah. where yeah. it's where it's unnecessary. Right. It says, but in lowliness of mind, let us each esteem others better than themselves. That's yeah. how you heal racism. Mm -hmm. Brother, I esteem you higher. I look from I look at you higher than me and I'll take down for you to be lifted up if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible is saying. So, pa Pastor, let's 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 go to the, the coin phrase here. Right. The most popular phrase today. But but so how do we. So what you're saying, we just supposed to just sit back and just deal with the systemic racism. It's, it's just nobody want to deal with the system of it, man. The, the white man been using nepotism to stay ahead in, in, in society for years. Now we can't do it. What, what, what do you say to that? I say, have you prayed? <laughs> because that's what we forget about. Right. We forget we're Christians. Right. We forget we're in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. We forget we have an advocate with the Father. We have perks as believers. Talk so, I, you know, I, I, I'm not saying again, racism doesn't exist. But I'm saying if I'm the pastor of a church, it's irresponsible for me to make that the narrative of why we aren't having success in our church and we all serve the same God. Right. And that's what I'm saying. If I do what's right and if I live this thing right, God is going to give me what he deems for me. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to talk about what we deserve, we deserve worse than the slaves. Deserve. Talk about it. So let's don't get uppity about this day right. all of us deserve the flames of hell and, and make yourself a victim of something that you're not a victim of yeah as you stated starting off i mean we're free so why is this always the the clinging narrative to draw on the emotions of people to get everybody stirred up for something right it, it, to me ultimately it 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 shines a light on a distraction 
for what you should be doing in light of all of it, the homosexuality, the racism, all of that. If you take care of your home, that's one step closer to, to, to being preventative and what the next situation goes, right? Because if your kids go out and emulate what you did, then their kids go out and then eventually it seems like it might evaporate, right, from society. Yeah. The issue is, we don't want to pay attention to the things that are truly holding us down and truly holding us back. We, they don't ever bring up the fatherlessness. They never talk about all of these rappers who have multiple kids who fun them around. And now the new, the, the new, the new pimping is you take your baby mothers or ex-wives and you put them on a TV show and then, and then you get a, a check from them and then you act like in public, y'all ain't really cool, but y'all really sh sharing a check because you put on. So it's so many things that we could be talking about on these platforms, but instead we want to keep the same jargon, the same stuff going around and around and around as it keeps us going around and around and around. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and then blame the white man. Right. <laughs> Why are you blaming the white man, man? If I'm going to open the liquor store, I'm going to open it right where the drunks are. Right. Exactly. Dude, if I'm going to sell some crack, where the crackheads at? What will make the best crack house? I need them in and out of there all day long if right. I'm going to make crack money. Right. So how are you going to blame the white man? Why don't we just get the crack out of here? Right. And I ain't opening no crack house. Right, so right, which right. cameras on? Right, right. folk with, oh. They'll cut that little clip and just have me repeating it. Right. And when I, when I open my crack... Go ahead, Carmina. We... <laughs> So my next question is, <laughs> given these opportunities where we get on these platforms, why is it that we rarely see the straightforward, the the true preaching? Why don't we see that? It seems like by the time it gets to these platforms, it's watered down and just kind of conforming. Right. I mean, the, the same thing we kind of already said, I mean, the devil owns these platforms. OK, so anytime you see a believer on one of these platforms, uh, they'll either conform to it or they'll never get on that platform ever again. This is why though he direct questions and direct shots were being taken at Christianity and, and, and the Bible somehow it started it, it always veered right back to himself and love right and you know love is truth and truth is love and if we laugh at it it won't be funny anymore because everybody don't like comedy it was just it was going all <laughs> around the circle but never approaching what the what the truth actually was you can't get on I okay so I work for a company I'm employed by a company I'm in management at this company. I have different ideas sometimes in my head. So I'm going to walk in the company and then start just spewing out my ideas based on the company that's been established over 100 years. What do you think happened to me, Carmina? They're going to tell you. Goodbye. All right. So if I go on the devil's platform and I start talking Jesus, 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 if I get away with it for 15 minutes, you think I'm coming back talking Jesus, Jesus again? All right. But if I have my own motive and my own hidden agenda, which is to ultimately sell records and get people to to love me, because I'm telling you, even after 50 years on this earth, I'm still an insecure man. And it's not making fun of him. I'm saying this is the problem. Man, stay off the platform and get yourself together first and then put yourself back in that position if God leads you back. And that's the thing. We assume these platforms are God given as if the devil isn't the small G God of this world, yeah. according to scripture. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me close. I'm yes, gonna sir. Close this out. Uh, All right. On these platforms, they can talk about love, life, and happy thoughts. They can talk about mercy and forgiveness. They can even talk about how they sin and make mistakes. You can say that all day long. Mm -hmm. But you can never, absolutely ever, talk about being saved from sin and living for God according to Christ's way. When you do this, you use the devil's platform for Christ, and this divides his kingdom and tears it down. Why would the devil use his kingdom to build God's kingdom? Scripture says it like this, Matthew 12 and 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, when they heard Jesus teaching or whatever, they got mad and they ran out of stuff to say about him. So they finally came with this. They said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Hmm. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, and this is very important. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then what happens? The kingdom of God is come unto you. 
or else how can one enter in a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house he that is not with me is against me, is against me. Mm -hmm. and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad